Hello, I'm James Caldwell. Welcome to the Classical Guitar Practice Room. This video is the second in a series covering Segovia's diatonic major and minor scales. In the first video, I gave an overview of the scales, and we learned that there's 24, 12 major and 12 minor, and we can classify those scales as being two octave scales or three octave scales, and we can further classify them by noting whether they start on the sixth string or if they begin on the fifth string. Today we're looking at the second scale in the book, and it's the first minor scale, A minor. Now, a note about the minor scales. Segovia uses the melodic minor form consistently throughout the book. The melodic minor scale has the same notes as its relative major scale, except when you're going up the scale, ascending the scale, the sixth and seventh scale degrees are raised a half step. And when you descend the scale, they return to their natural state. So in the case of A minor, A is the first note in the scale. The sixth note would be A, B, C, D, E, F. F will be sharp going up the scale. And the seventh scale degree, G, will also be sharp going up the scale. But when we descend the scale, the F and the G will return to natural. I'll just play a little bit of it so you can hear what it sounds like. We have A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, going up, coming down, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Now once more, without me talking. So it sounds a little different coming down the scale as it did going up. Now this is a three octave scale, and because of that feature, we're gonna go up the fretboard one way, and descending, we're gonna to have to come down a different way because two of the notes in each octave are changing. And Segovia also decided to take a slightly different path coming down. We also learned in the first video that as you look at the scales, underneath the notes, is a series of numbers in parentheses with little brackets after them. And that's telling us what string to play those notes on, the notes that are bracketed off. So with the A minor scale, it's telling us to begin on the sixth string. We also learned in the first video that the numbers printed above the notes are telling you what fingers to use on the left hand. Now, what it doesn't tell you is what position we're starting in. So we have to know that if we're going to play that first note A on the sixth string, it is at the fifth fret. So my suggestion is to establish the positions as we go through the scale. So we can write a Roman numeral five right above the first note, indicating that we're beginning in the fifth position. Looking at the music, we can see that in position five on the sixth string, we're going to play fingers one, three, and four. And on the fifth string, still in fifth position, fingers one and three. Now continuing on the fifth string, we see fingers one, three, four. We're gonna shift up to the ninth position for that F sharp. Right above that note, the F sharp with a number one above it, we can put in a Roman numeral nine because we are now in ninth position. And continuing on, we have fingers one, three, four, over to the fourth string, fingers one, two, four, and to the third string, fingers one and three, second string, finger one. So we played all of those notes in the ninth position. Now here on the second string, we have the first note one, which we just played, and the next note is a one. And it's actually a shift right here to the 10th position. So right above that second finger number one, we can put in a Roman numeral 10. We'll play a few notes in 10th position. Second string, we have one, three, four. Over to the first string, we have fingers one and three. Now, continuing on with the scale, we're still on the first string, obviously, but we're going to jump up to the 14th fret. So right above this number one, which is an F sharp, we can write a Roman numeral 14. And the last three notes are one, three, four. That was a F sharp, G sharp, A that we talked about before. Now we're descending the scale, still in the 14th position. Just this finger two is a G natural. Just to recap that, we had F sharp, G sharp, A, G natural. 
Now we're going to shift to the tenth position. Finger four, three, one. That's our F natural E D. And we'll stay in tenth position over to the second string. Finger four, three, one. Over to the third string. Finger three, finger one. Now we're going to shift to the seventh position. So we'll write a Roman numeral seven above this number three. Three, one on the third string. Fourth string, four, three, one. Fifth string, four, two, one. Sixth string, four. We have another number four on the sixth string and we shift right here with the fourth finger down to fifth position. So above that second four, we can put a Roman numeral five and the last three notes are four, three, one. Let me play up and down it. Try and listen for where the F sharp and G sharp are going up the scale and how they're natural coming down. So we go up the scale starting in fifth position, ninth position, tenth position, fourteenth position, tenth position, seventh position, fifth position. Let me do that again without talking. So that's the A melodic minor scale. I want to talk a little bit more about the right hand. So far I've just been playing that I M. And as we discussed in the first video, you need to get I M alternation really solid with every new scale you learn so that it's automatic and you never make a mistake, hopefully. And once I M is that good, then you can try I A and then you can reverse them, try M-I, try A-I, and then you can try M-A, which I uh, didn't really talk about in the first video. And reverse that and go A-M. That covers the main alternating fingers that we want to use, I, M, and A, and all combinations of those. One more thing about the right hand. When going up the scale, I allow the side of my thumb to just glide along the strings that I've already played. And that keeps them muted so that we don't hear everything ringing. So just watch the thumb here. If I play the scale and intentionally leave my thumb up in the air and I try not to mute anything, this is what it would sound like. Right there you can still hear all the strings on the guitar still ringing. Uh, so muting with the thumb means that we're only hearing the notes that we're playing, which is what we want to hear. It uh, cleans it up nicely. As we ascend the scale and advance across the strings, our forearm slowly moves out. It keeps the uh, plucking fingers in the same position above the strings they're playing. So you essentially get the same stroke on each string as you advance the hand. And as we descend the scale, the forearm retreats, bringing the fingers over the strings they're playing. So this pattern that we've established here and all the sh shifts that are in it, ascending and descending, for A melodic minor is the same later in the book that he uses for F minor. We just take it all the way down to the first fret and begin here. And in there, for F sharp, second fret. And for G minor, third fret. And for A flat minor, beginning at the fourth fret. So it's the same pattern that covers five of the minor scales A, F, F sharp, G, and A flat. We learned the two octave C major scale that began on the fifth string in the last video, and that covers four different scales later in the book. And now we have A melodic minor, and its pattern covers a total of five. So just learning these first two scales as you go through the book, there's a total of nine that should be familiar to you when you get to them. 
Well, thanks for joining me today in the Classical Guitar Practice Room, and uh, stay tuned as we continue this series. And by the way, if you don't have a copy of Segovia's Diatonic Scales, there's a link in the description that will allow you to purchase one. And every classical guitarist should have this in their library. Don't be the one that doesn't have it. Thanks for watching. I've been James Caldwell.